Hail and well met stalwart adventurers, and welcome to a very enchanting episode of Markers and Monsters. A big special birthday shout out to Manise Robin. Hi! It's her birthday today as of the recording of this video, and I thought no better way to celebrate than drawing one of her favorite creatures and one of mine, and that's the mythical magical unicorn. As you can see, I'm roughing in simply two small circles, one bigger than the other, and connecting them with this triangular shape. That's pretty much it for a horse's head. Uh, I'm adding in this flowing mane and beautiful hair, and just kind of keeping it simple. I wanted to give that nice long unicorn horn up above, and we're going to keep the background again pretty simple. Some kind of mysterious, magical castle in the background, relatively small, but hey, what a great place for adventure. As I said before, unicorns are one of my favorite creatures. I'm a huge fantasy fan. You guys may know this about me, but play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, read a lot of fantasy books, watch a lot of fantasy movies. And for my money, there's no creature that symbolizes the genre of fantasy better than the unicorn. Some might say it's the dragon. I'd say a dragon's a close second, but the unicorn is number one for fantasy in my book. These mythical creatures go back a long, long ways, even to ancient Greece, believe it or not. But we know them mostly from the medieval period, where they were on heraldry, tapestries, uh, books and the like. A unicorn is, of course, a horned horse, more or less. Um... There are other definitions. Let's not get into them. Let's not get too deep in the weeds in this episode. Let's just talk about the classic quintessential fantasy unicorn. Just how cool it is. Generally speaking, these horned horses are portrayed as being white, although other variations occur and they symbolize kind of purity. This, um, the symbol of like the magic of the natural world and it's kind of untouchable by man. Usually in the literature and fantasy, they often say that unicorns cannot be seen or touched unless by the purest hearted folk in the land. Uh, oftentimes that is children for obvious reasons, but you know, on occasion, uh, maiden fair is able to see the unicorns or interact with them. Um, and other characters who are pure of heart and good in spirit. Unicorns kind of symbolize to me this, this magical world out there. If uh, you see a unicorn pop up in a story, you know that there, there's magic, there's fae creatures and fairies and mermaids and anything else. And I think that's pretty cool. It's, it's shorthand for telling me that what I'm about to see is going to be fantastic. I wanted to keep my unicorn in the drawing here pretty simple. And as you can see, I'm kind of uh, doing the inking first here with the Copic multi-liners. There's a lot of little fiddly bits and putting down the Copic color first was going to give a little bit of a problem. So I wanted to outline this here and just keep it really simple. We're going to go in almost in a painterly way, kind of start adding in shades. Now the colors I'm going to be using are all very, very light and very, very soft. They might not show up on the video too, too well, um, but I mean, there's not a ton I can do about that. I'm using the Copic, uh, they, they go by numbers, and these are all in the uh, double zero or less. So like green double zero for the trees, this blue sky here is with blue triple zero. Uh, quadruple zero is so light as to be almost white, and we'll use a lot of quadruple zeros for shading in the white fur of the unicorn. I'd also like to point out that I'm going to not shade really with gray. Uh, I want to keep it colorful. I want to keep it fun and, and light. And to that end, we're going to be shading in with extremely light purples, pinks, blues, maybe a little bit of, of very light gray to just darken some of the areas up. But shading with color is one of the definite ways to do it. We're also going to keep the background, like I said, pretty simple, kind of a field here of flowers, uh, some some woodland uh, around and uh, trees and, and grasses and things like that and just keep it just keep it light keep it simple and keep it fun as I'd said I'm a big uh, fantasy fan and unicorns definitely feature in some of my favorite fantasy works 
I can wholeheartedly recommend a couple to everybody. Uh, first and foremost is the movie Legend. Yes, the 80s film with Tom Cruise directed by, directed by Ridley Scott, uh, wherein Tim Curry as the Lord of Darkness seeks to kidnap a unicorn and use its magic from its horn to cast the world into darkness. Very evil. But it's up to Tom Cruise and his fairy friends to rescue the princess, uh, defeat the darkness, save the unicorns, restore magic and goodness to the world. And it's just a great film. Uh, one I had seen on TV a lot when I was very younger. And since then, I think that was one of the big introductions to the unicorns and the fantasy genre that I had. I'm also a big fan of the film The Last Unicorn and its book by Peter S. Beagle. This is not for kids, though. Even though that's always advertised with a friendly unicorn on the cover that looks like you could show it to your, you know, uh, toddler, this deals with the very heavy adult themes like mortality and innocence and loss and regret. Uh, it's a beautiful book, a beautiful story, great animated film. But again, um, I would say you should probably be older uh, to watch that. Maybe uh, maybe 10 or 11 at least. Um, if you've ever read any fantasy, you know unicorns pop up a lot. And one of uh, the great ones, I think, is a short story by Roger Zelazny called Unicorn Variations. Wherein a man finds a unicorn in a ghost town. The unicorn challenges him to a game of chess with the fate of the world on the line. Each participant has a month to complete their moves, to strategize and think about what they're going to do next. The man, of course, has to seek out the legendary great chess players of the world. That's right, Bigfoots. Uh, so he goes to the Pacific Northwest and every month learns chess strategy from Bigfoot so he can defeat a unicorn and, and save the earth. Good times. The unicorns also feature a bit in Zelazny's Chronicles of Amber, a great fantasy series uh, about Amber, the one true world, everything else being but shadows of Amber. And the unicorn, of course, is the very important uh, being that taught good King Oberon like where to build this reality and everything. Cool, cool stuff. I'm also, I gotta bring up Lisa Frank, you guys. If you know anything about the 90s, you know about the artwork of Lisa Frank on Trapper Keepers and posters and whatnot. Bright colors, rainbows, unicorns, things running around like that. Very cool stuff. I uh, got a lot of flack, especially among young men my age uh, back in the 90s. But now looking back, I got to say that that was something I should have appreciated more when I had it. But uh, hey, you know, I, I love it. Rainbows, unicorns, sparkles, glitter, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's cool. Just embrace it. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. Um, sparkly things are not necessarily bad. Uh, if it's not your jam, it's not your jam, but I can tell you that it certainly is mine. Speaking of sparkles, I'm going in here with a white paint pen to kind of add some sparkles and shine in the hair, give it some luster uh, on the skin a little bit, and... Uh, just, I don't know, make it shiny, make it sparkly, make it cool like that. And yeah, looking pretty good. So let's uh, finish up by getting out our pen and signing up our work as always. And I am also going to say a final hi to my niece Robin. Give her a wave and say, I hope you enjoy your unicorn and I uh, hope you enjoy your fourth birthday. Here's the scan. Very cool, very fun stuff. I added some chrysan chrysanthemums in the hair, as that's November's uh, birth flower, apparently. And uh, boy, I'm delighted. This turned out great. I love talking about fantasy. I love talking about mythical beasts. So if you guys have any specific uh, fun fantasy things you want to talk about, I'd throw them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Love to chat about this stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. I will stop babbling and let you get on with your day. Hope you all stay safe. Hope you all have a magical, mystical, wonderful day. That's it from Colin. We'll see you on the next one. Good night.